Hi guys, this is Mrs. Kuban, and these are your notes on adaptations. These will go in your science journal on pages 129 and 130. Please be sure to fill in the blanks and have your writing ready to go. Okay. Organisms that live in different biomes have, all have different needs to help them survive. In order to survive, an organism must be able to obtain food, water, air, and space. So in this image, you can see the squirrel and the gorilla are um, trying to obtain food. The fish are dealing with um, limited space, and the zebra is, um, they are working at getting enough water to drink. Animals or plants need to be able to find shelter and build homes. So you see the nest, and you see three different um, animals that have shells, the turtle, the crab, and the snail. Withstand temperatures and weather. So what you see here are organisms that have to deal with um, the tundra, the polar bear and the seal, and the desert. The cactus has to deal with the hot and dry weather, and the camel also has to deal with the hot and dry weather. Avoid predation. So these animals have to deal with avoiding being eaten by predators. And we're going to talk about some of the adaptations they have to avoid predation or being eaten. Attract mates. Um, animals need to have a way to um, find other organisms so that they can reproduce and thus be successful following survival of the fittest so that males might have certain colorations or certain behaviors that attract females. Respond to changes in the environment. So animals need to, animals and plants need to know, like say for example, plants need to know how to um, get to the light or their roots need to be, grow down, like gravitrophism and geotrophism and phototrophism. Um, um, the geese need to know how to migrate. The person needs to know how to dress warmly for the weather and the, the other girls are dealing with the hot weather by cooling off. The traits that help an organism survive and reproduce in its natural habitat are called adaptations. Adaptations do not de develop during an organism's lifetime but over many generations. Organisms that are not suitably adapted to their environment will either have to move out of the habitat or may eventually die out. Adaptations may be structural or behavioral. So structural comes in how the plant or animal is shaped. Behavioral is in how mainly in the, how the animal would behave. Structural adaptations are physical features that help an organism like the shape of a bird's beak or the color and thickness of a bear's fur. So what you see there are two different types of bears that have different types of fur and coloration that might help them with their environment. And the, um, you see the hummingbird that has a certain type of beak that helps it get the nectar out of flowers. Some plants store food in a bulb during periods of drought. So the bulb is a way to store food so that the um, plant can deal with times without um, that it can't get to water so it can't make its own food. Another thing is that um, plants might have bulbs to help it survive the winter. Birds migrating, bears hibernating, or fish schooling are examples of behavioral adaptations which are things that organisms do to survive. So migrating is when the birds um, travel thousands of miles to get to different um, weather conditions. Hibernating, um, animals hibernate so that they can deal with the winter weather where there's much less food. And schooling is when the fish group together and if they stay together in a large group they can help to avoid predators. Since staying alive is a key to an organism being able to survive and reproduce, here are some of the ways animals protect or defend themselves. Staying in groups. So what you see the fish in a large school 
if they're in a large school, then it's really hard for the predators to pick out any one of them to attack. And then the you see the large group of elephants and the large group of zebras, so that staying in a group can give them protection in numbers. Use of poisons or odors. So the poisons can help the organism avoid being eaten. So it has a bright warning coloration to warn animals to stay away because there could be poisons in their skin. And other animals have um, odors. So you see the skunk in the middle. The rattlesnake uses um, the sound to deter people. And then it has poison in its venom if it needs to strike. Use of colors and shapes, camouflage. So what you see here, and in some pictures it's pretty easy to find the animal, but in other pictures it's pretty hard. These animals are blending in to avoid predators, and it can also help them find prey. Ways of escaping or confronting danger. So what we see here are that the octopus can give off ink that can help it get away from a predator. The pufferfish can blow up and that its quills come out or its spikes come out to avoid being eaten. The porcupine can um, make its quills actually go out of its body and into what's trying to attack it. Use of body parts. So again, trying to avoid predators. This crab has a very large claw to help it avoid predators. The warthog has tusks. The lizard can lose its tail so that its tail can be pulled off by a predator, but the lizard just runs away without the tail and can grow a new one. And the bees can obviously sting and use their stinger to help avoid um, predation or um, dangerous things. Mimicry or bluff. So in mimicry, an animal will um, have colorations that make you believe it's dangerous when it's really not because it looks like another animal, or bluff that the animal can make a posture like it's going to attack when it's really not, so that it can get another animal to go away and leave it alone. That concludes our notes. Please have them ready for a quiz on Wednesday.